sir. We've done it. Do you want to write it or do you want me to write it for you? You write it. I'm all upset. Let's start with where you met the little girl. Just remember, details are important. She'll come and take me home. Hello? My mother has to come and get me. He said I could go home. He said I could go home for Christmas. What do I send them? A T2S, an 11P, or the bottom half of a 104, depending on whether they're married, single, or dead. You should put your brain inside that computer they're threatening us with. He hides his talents. If they knew you spoke three languages in Absalada, he'd go. Yes, Stefan. And your music, reading, and playing. Auntie, I'm with the Inland Revenue.
accident. Accident. It was an accident. She's uh, 10, maybe 12 years old. First look says she's been here about three days. And she's been stabbed. A lot. Get yourself down on the roadway. I don't want to see any vehicles pulling in. Move! Come on, now! She was found by a motorist who slept overnight in his van down there in the lay-by. Timing and description match a Leslie Molseed. She went missing on Sunday. No, look at that. 
Stefan Kisko? Yes. I've received a complaint that a man fitting you a description indecently exposed himself on the afternoon of Saturday, the 4th of October, in Vavasour Street. Nonsense. Ridiculous. He would never, never do such a thing. Never. Who is saying this? Mr. Kisko, can you tell me where you were and what you did on Saturday, the 4th of October? He would never, never do a thing like that. Never. Do you think you could have been in the vicinity of Vavasour Street at approximately 2.45 p.m. on Saturday, the 4th of October? Who is saying this? Who? A Saturday, you said. Well, that was an old month ago. Just try and think it through. The afternoon. Well... He couldn't have done it. I remember where he was. He was in the hospital. He had an operation on his foot. He was in the hospital, so... You have come to the wrong house. Afternoon, sir. Detective Sergeant Ackroyd. Mum! 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 My mother's not here. You'll have to come back later. It was you you wanted to have a word with, sir. Have we come at an inconvenient moment? It's just that your lot have already been here, accusing me of things I haven't done and upsetting me, mother. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Would you like to tell us all about it? I've got a job. I'm a civil servant. The, uh, the two officers who were here before wanted to know where you were on the 4th of October. My mother's already told them. I was at the hospital. I had an operation on my foot. I'm actually uh, investigating the murder of a little girl which occurred the following day, 5th of October. Were you still in hospital then? Yeah, I suppose so. I've got a discharge letter from the hospital. I'll go and find it. Watch the front door. Hello? This is Stefan. The police are here again. Mother's very upset. Can you remember what day I came out of hospital?
Oh. I see. Thank you. Bye. Can't remember. It's just that now I'm supposed to have killed a little girl. All this is nonsense. Nonsense. Who is saying these things against us? Who? Just making a few inquiries, Mrs. Gisco, that's all. We've already answered everything. He wasn't there. He couldn't have done anything. Yeah, we, uh... Check with the hospital, and the record shows that your son was in fact discharged from hospital three weeks before the incidents we're investigating. Mr. Kisco, is there anyone apart from your mother who can confirm your whereabouts on the 4th and 5th of October? He wouldn't be with anyone but me. I'd like you to come down to the police station, Mr. Kisco. No. This is madness. Look what you're doing to him. It's very cold outside. Perhaps you'd like to get your coat. Oh. Stefan. You'll see. You'll see. We'll go down and we'll sort it all out. It's your son we want to talk to, Mrs. Kisco. I will come too. No. We need to talk with him alone. girls. What do you mean you don't fancy girls? When I was in the hospital, this doctor gave me some injections, you know, to bring me on a bit. You're telling me you're impotent? Yes. That's why I couldn't have done any of these things. Interesting girls whatsoever. So why have you got these in your car? It's those injections. I never did anything like this before. Anything like what? Empty your pockets on the table, please. I already did it. Do it again. What 
do you use this knife for? Well, I always carry a knife. Hmm. A lot of men carry a knife. So can you tell me why you carry two knives? One's for cutting string and the other's for cleaning the car battery. You lied about the indecent exposure. You lied about being in hospital. You lied about not liking girls. One way or another, we're going to get the fucking truth out of you. How much longer, please? A, a terrible mistake has been made. My son is from a good family. Just look at us. He can't be alone like this. He needs me. I've already told you, Mrs. Kisco, that that is not Please. possible. Please, could I see the policeman in charge? Look, if you go home, if you go home now, I'll ask him to come and see you. Is he a good man? Yes. What's the point of carrying balloons around in your car other than to attract children? Christmas. For decorations. And the sweets? I eat a lot of sweets. We know you wanked all over it. We know! Thank you for coming. She has been so anxious to talk with you. Oh, good. You'll have tea. Alfreda? Yes. And something to eat, Inspector? Mrs. Kisco. I pray you come to sort out this terrible mistake. Some of your policemen have made a terrible mistake. Mrs. Kisco, why did you lie when you said your son was in hospital? I was confused. Sir? One was in the cupboard, the other under the bed. I've got a feeling this one's getting itself wrapped up for Christmas. All the knives belong to me, Father. All of them. I kept them to remind me of him. Sort of keepsakes. These vehicle numbers written down on scraps of paper found in your car. I've already been through that. Well, let's go over it again. I was run off the road once by a van. I reported it to the police. They told me to write down the number of any suspicious looking vehicles. Well, you never gave them the numbers. Tell me about this number here, the one written in red. ADK539L. Well, is it your writing? Must be. And is that your paper? Yes. Try and tell me why you wrote that number down. Because the owner of that car lives miles away from you, and as far as he knows, he's never come into contact with you. And it just so happens that at 2.30 p.m. on Sunday the 5th of October, he drove that car past the scene of the murder. If you wrote that number down, you must have been there. Or written it down on your journey there when you had the little girl with you. She said you were in hospital and you weren't. You were out on the streets and you took that little girl. Now, come on, your mother can't help you now. We found fibres. Fibres on that child's clothing. Fibres from the carpets in your car. She must have picked them up when you drove off with her. Suspect was seen to be visibly shaking. Hello, Fishko.
She's only got me. She can't be on her own for Christmas. My auntie Frieda will go around, but it won't be the same for her. Of course it won't. She'll want you there. That's what Christmases are all about. Families. Getting together. So it needs sorting out. We have to go home. We could all go home. If you told us the truth. All this would never have happened. What would never have happened? That little girl I picked up. Leslie. I don't know what happened. It's all easy. When did you pick Leslie up? On that Sunday dinner time. The day I killed her. Are you telling me you murdered Leslie Molseed? Yes. I killed that little girl. <laughs> And I need some pubic hair as well. Drop your trousers. But when can I go home? For Christmas? And I also need some seminal fluid. So if you could masturbate and ejaculate into this. Stefan Kishko. Uh, the main interview for Mr. Wright. My son is not a criminal. He is not a criminal. No, please. Hey, Joseph, sit down, Mrs. Kishko. You'll need to make another statement, retracting your confession. I just said those things to get them off my back. I thought if I told them what they wanted, they'd let me out. And as well as the murder, you also confessed to exposing yourself on two separate occasions. I may have done once, but only once. And it was an accident. I just wasn't zipped up properly. Could have happened to anyone. And I don't know where they got that other one from. I just went along with what I thought they wanted to hear, but they still wouldn't let me go. They needed all those tests. Whoever killed the girl masturbated over her body. They want to check your sperm against the sperm they found on her clothes. Do you understand? Yes. So can I go home now? Mr. Outridge. Kisco results, sir. Which one? Semen staining on the child's clothing. And that's an analysis of semen provided by Kisco. Right. Well, we'll need copies sent over to the inquiry team. Stefan Ivan Kishko. You are charged that you, on or about the 5th of October 1975, did unlawfully kill Leslie Molseed, which is contrary to common law. Do you have anything to say? 
No reply. I signed. I don't know what I signed, but I didn't kill that little girl. Habe ich nicht. Habe ich nicht. Verwissenes. Verwissenes. Ich wollte doch nur nach Hause gehen. Sie werden den Ball sehen, als ein eine schreckliche, schreckliche Gemacht haben. Speak in English. English. Do you understand? It's bad. It's all right. Are you locked up with this others? Mr. Wright says an alibi is the best defense. But I was with you. I tell them over and over. Every Sunday, the same thing. Church, visit your father's graves and lunch. I can't stay in here. I haven't done anything. Mr. Wright has said he'll get you the best defense lawyer, Stefan. A trial. I'll be on trial. It won't come to that. They'll see their mistake before that. Yes. Mrs. Kisco, we did say last time you came that you had to have an appointment. Mr. Wright does have other clients. But I have only one son on trial for a crime he did not do. Please. We told the police about these carpets, but they were not interested. These are the carpets that Stefan had in his car at the time of the murder. Look. See, they are all worn and dirty. They're making tests on the wrong pieces. The carpet they took from his car in December were new ones. They were not in his car at the time of the murder. These were in his car at the time of the murder. Mr. Wright must tell them, please, yes. Thank you. How are you feeling, Stefan? Nervous, very nervous. Now you remember Mr. Waddington. He's going to represent you. And how have they been treating you, Stefan? Food OK? It's not too bad. I've gone over all the facts again. And I've very carefully considered the evidence that the prosecution are going to give to the jury. And I want you to consider pleading guilty. We can argue for the charge to be reduced to manslaughter on the basis that due to the testosterone injections you received for your sexual problem, you were somewhat out of control and thus of diminished responsibility. But I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it!
This is a very sad story. The story of a once harmless but emotionally and physically retarded young man. A young man whose sexuality was abruptly activated by medication, resulting in him embarking upon a series of escalating sexual forays, culminating in the abduction and brutal murder of an innocent little girl. A murder to which the accused confessed. And you will be shown that it was a confession of such detail it could only have come from the murderer himself. It will become clear to you that the evidence put forward by the prosecution is entirely circumstantial and that the nub of their case is the alleged confession the defendant made. Now, you might ask yourself, why on earth should a man confess to a killing he has not perpetrated? But you will hear evidence to show how unusual Stefan Kisko was, how he was utterly dependent on his mother, and that he made a confession to murder in order to be reunited with her. But murder was only part of the defendant's confession. He also admitted to two counts of indecent exposure. We just got to the youth club and he jumped out, opened his coat and his trousers fell down. His thing was sticking out. And then he said, when I get you two bastards, I'll shove this up you. He unzipped his trousers and took it out. Then I heard him shout, come here, let me round this up you. There seems to be no relevance at all in any of these prosecution witnesses, my lord, as not one of these young girls has been able to give a consistent description of the man who exposed himself. But if it please the court, my lord, on the next day, the 4th, there was another incident which occurred in broad daylight. And he was in front of us, just staring at us. Then he lifted up his parker and exposed himself. And is that man in the courtroom now, Maxine? Yes. May the court please note. After the accused, stated he had no interest in girls whatsoever. Where did you find these men's magazines? Hidden under the carpet, in the boot of the accused's car, sir. There were no signs of sexual assault, but on examination of the clothes, the knickers and the skirt, there were light semen stains. How would those stains have got there? Well, the opinion I reached was that whoever murdered the child masturbated over her. So the murder had a sexual basis? In my opinion, yes. Dear Mum and Auntie Frieda, I have never been so humiliated and embarrassed as I have been in the last two days. The prosecution really went downtown with the good name I once had. Trying to imply that I was some sort of sex maniac and the newspapers have had a field day with my name. Sex jab man turned killer, court told. And I asked him, what was the point of carrying balloons and sweets in your car other than to attract children? We know that the car in question passed the scene of the murder at approximately 2.30 p.m. And I suggested to him that he must have been there to write down that particular car number. I put sellotape over the girl's garments so that any loose foreign fibres would be picked up. Did you discover any? Yes. On the jumper, the vest, skirt, and from one sock. They were similar to fibres to be found in the carpet, which was taken from the accused car. What were your conclusions? Well, that the murdered girl had been a passenger in the car. Thank you. Would it be true to say that very considerable quantities of this carpeting must have been manufactured? I'm not sure what the quantities would be, but I examined 30 other cars in the course of this investigation, and there was nothing to link them with the girls' clothing. 
From what I have seen of Mr Justice Parks, he hasn't really missed anything that has been going on. And in all fairness, I can say that the prison officers that I have been in contact with have shown no disrespect towards me, nor have they mistreated me in any physical way or caused disgrace to the uniform that they are wearing. And as I have said, I must put my faith and trust in British justice and the British Bobby who never lies and always tells the truth. It's so stacked against him. I mean, he just looks the part. Well, he's a defense. We're trying to get him to plead guilty. There you go. Excuse me. Orange juice, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And she admits to hearing every word, yes? Yes, Your Lordship. I cautioned her not to say anything to other members of the jury. Well, I think we can assume that the juror thought that you were talking about Mr. Waddington discussing the possibilities of Kishko pleading guilty to manslaughter, not murder, yes? I mean, we're nearly through the damn thing now, yes? I don't see any grounds for a mistrial. Mr. Taylor? No. Mr. Waddington? Now, let's go over that again. The part of your confession concerning the indecent exposures. There was a disco going on at the youth club, and two girls came down the road. Something came over me, and I unzipped my trousers and got my penis out. How could you have made this statement if you hadn't been there? and you knew nothing about a youth club or a disco. The officers told me about it. Something came over me. The officers told you to say that too. No. That bit just came into me head. Now, when you confessed to killing the girl, you gave very accurate details of where you picked her up. How were you able to do that? Because Inspector Holland had said it. Said what, exactly? Well, like, wasn't it Broad Lane where you picked her up? I just said yes to go along with it to get out of there. Then there's your description of the scene of the murder. You were able to tell police that you took the girl up a grass bank. It wasn't very high, and then it went flat. Again, how could you have given such an accurate, detailed description if you hadn't been there? They just kept asking me questions like, was it steep, was it flat? I just picked an answer. But you picked all the right answers. And as to the details of the murder itself, can you tell the court why you were able to describe so accurately what occurred? The fact that the murderer masturbated over the young girl's body. I told you. One of the policemen had already shouted it. We know you wanked all over her. But even if that were true, what you said in your statement was, I shot between her legs over her knickers. Exactly where the forensic tests showed seminal staining. I put it to you once again. How could you have possibly known? I just wanted to go home. I just wanted to go home. I just wanted to go home. But you originally told police officers that your son was in hospital, and then when you were confronted with the truth, you went on to change your story. He did not do this. So I put it to you that your accounts to the police as to where your son was on the day of the murder changed until finally you both managed to agree on an alibi that would seem credible in court. That is not what happened. And he was always with me. Thank you. Mrs. Kisco. 
Mrs. Kisco, you may stand down now. What I want to do, with your permission, is to argue diminished responsibility. Stefan, do you remember the injections you had? We can use those in your defence. Anything that helps. Good man! Now, do you also remember we had a Dr. Tarsh come and talk to you? Michael Austin Tarsh, a consultant psychiatrist having special experience in the diagnosis and treatment of psychiatric disorders. Yes, I am. Now, for argument's sake, I want you to assume the defendant is guilty and that his confession statement is correct. So, when you met the defendant, did he strike you as having a normal personality? I think of Kisco as a fat, socially withdrawn, socially inept, mother fixated, unhappy person, dim socially, dim not knowing where to put himself, not able to form relationships. Would you care to speculate as to the effect on him of a fairly large dose of the male sex hormone? Would he have been emotionally prepared for this sudden appearance of sex drive? Not at all. It would have been completely foreign to him. Assuming he killed, do you consider he would have been fully responsible for what he did? No. I would have considered him to have been in a state of sexual exaltation, which first allowed him to approach the little girl. I would then speculate some sort of rejection or fighting took place. Careless words on behalf of the little girl could have been the trigger to promote the frenzied attack upon her. Like you're a dirty old man. Something of the sort, or you ought to be locked up. Something like that. Stefan, I really must urge you to change your plea to guilty before the judge sums up. I didn't do it. I didn't do it! 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 The person responsible for the murder was probably a person with a car. And secondly, he was a person with a sexual problem. In view of all the evidence, it is clear, isn't it, that on the day that the murder took place, the accused was a person with a sexual problem. He is also a person with a car. You also have to consider whether the accused was able to give such accurate details of the murder from what he had learned from the police, or whether he was able to give those details because he was actually there. In his closing address, the counsel for the prosecution argued that the defense was attempting to ride two horses. They had their client saying, I didn't do it, but if I did, it was because of diminished responsibility. Now make of this what you will. Is it good they're taking so long? Oh yes. I think we were well served by Mr. Waddington. He'll have given them a lot to think about. In the end, it'll probably be decided on Stefan's confession. What about the carpet? I really do have to go. Mum, just for a moment to get away from all this, I have missed you very much, and I hope that you are keeping as well as can be expected in such trying times. Count of murder, what is your verdict? Please answer only guilty or not guilty. 
guilty. And is that the verdict of you all, or by a majority? By a majority. How many of you agreed to that verdict? How many dissented? Ten agreed, and two dissented. Stefan Ivan Kishko, you have been found guilty of a most brutal murder. You will go to prison for life. Take him down. only see it giving him more pain. Just our simple life here that goes on without him. When he should be
And because you've been seen to be at risk, under Section 43, we will, for your own safety, segregate you from the main body of prisoners. Any questions? Das gemacht. Wer hat das gemacht? Scheißkerl, Scheißkerl. Yes, I know speak English. It's a language of the people who did this to you. Charlotte. Charlotte, come here. Beasts. That's what they call us sexual offenders. They hate us. They can't get at me again. I'm in solitary 23 hours a day. Then an hour's exercise with all the other beasts. When the appeal comes. They will see it was all wrong. I can't be in here. I just can't. I don't want to build any hopes. The Court of Appeal won't be three nice old judges trying to make a wrong right. They'll want new evidence. And now, the alibi. I remember that I was reading an article to Stefan. I understand. You want to do whatever you can. The jury rejected Stefan's alibi. There's no point in just elaborating on what they've already heard. I'm afraid we might have to look at limiting his appeal. Scaling it down to diminished responsibility. Birthday. They wouldn't let me send presents. He's always laughed these. It'll be here for him when he gets out. Come on, kids, go. Let's go. a letter. No one came all alone in her cell. Just a letter. He won't be able to do this. Can we appeal again? He won't live through this. you have to say I was in the hospital when I wasn't? Why? You have no idea what it's like to be in here. No idea. And you put me in here. You, Mum. You. Stefan. No. She confused everyone. Right from the start, when they first came round, she had to jump in. Why did you do it? Why I was going to tell them the truth? Why? Stefan. No. Let him. Let him. 
Mom. 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 I'm Stefan's probation officer. Now that doesn't necessarily mean he'll ever be let out on probation, but I can liaise with you about his progress. My son is innocent. Phil, get a new lawyer. And I want to know what else I can do next to get him out. Mrs. Kisco, my job is to help Stefan come to terms with the fact that he's not going to get out. Believe me, for the first five or six years, it's not good for them to look too far into the future. for breakfast. For dinner we had fish stew and cake plus a bread roll. At tea time we had sausage roll, cake, bread and butter and tea. For the last few days it has been raining. That's all the news for today. Please don't worry about me. himself. Get up on your feet. I said get up on your feet, Kishko. Oh, he stinks. Clothes, bedding, oh, he stinks. We'll have to come and clean it up. Well, now we're going to make life easier for us. And a fucking sight harder for you. Dirty bugger. Cack yourself at home, do you? There's shit everywhere. Giving it to others to clean up for him. He's got shit all down his legs. Dirty bastard. Cacked everywhere. Tough his back and down his leg. Stinks. Stinks, you dirty bastard. Cacky ass.
to think or act for himself, indiscriminate soiling of himself, shows no self-respect or initiative. How he'll be after this, I don't know, but he will not be seen to be in need of psychiatric treatment unless he admits to having a problem. Mrs. Kishko. Well, there's a strong chance he'll do as you say. I want you to get him to admit to his crime. To change his plea to guilty. If he does, there's the possibility of pursuing further appeals to have the killing seen as manslaughter. Then we can get him the treatment that he needs. And perhaps one day he can be released back into society. But until he confesses, until he confesses, none of us, medical staff, prison officers, probation service, can begin to help him. And Stefan is in need of a lot of help. It's very much up to you. Perhaps it is the only way. Everyone is saying the same thing. The doctors do. To tell him to lie? So he can rot in prison for 20 years instead of 30? For something he didn't do? No. Never. British justice. It's time Stefan got some. In all honesty, I'd have to tell you what all the other solicitors have told you. You'd be wasting your money. It's my money to waste. Just tell me what else I can do. Well, you'd have to petition the Home Secretary for a referral back to the Court of Appeal. But without substantial new evidence, there's very little point in trying. I could write to Mrs. Thatcher. She is a mother with a son. She will understand. And I could write to the European Court of Human Rights. Is there anybody else? I really am very sorry. I wish there was some hope that I could give you, but I don't see that there's anything more to be done. Thank you. of miles away. Why? Why did they move you there? Can't be any worse than this place. We'll explain about the visiting. They can't expect the disabled to travel no. that far. No. We'll come every month. You know that. You found a new solicitor. We've seen so many, but none of them. None of them good enough men yet. Possible Argentine submarines and probable Argentine aircraft. We wondered. It wouldn't have been much safer to unload it at night. He got out of the way of the air during the day, teaming up. Look, I can squeeze you in a week to me. Oh, so no. daft. Gunboats. It's from another time. Top three need calling now. Mrs. Iverson's been rearrested. She's in cells waiting interview. The courts have a query about the Arnold case, and the Law Society want an answer on a legal aid Mr. Malone, I'm Mrs. Kisco. I wrote to you about my son, uh, Mrs. Stefan. Mrs. Kisco, please. Kisco. Tomorrow week. About Stefan. Stefan, yes. Come through. I don't want paying because I can't promise I can do anything for you. Mr. Malone, my son did not do this. I'll get your last solicitor to send everything over. I'll give you to read, and then I'll tell you if I think I can help. 
Thank you. I've been writing all over. I worked my way through the telephone book. So many solicitors. And who's looking out for you? I have my sister. And then moving Stefan down south. I have had enough of what you call a joke. So whoever you are telling to keep quiet, ask them to alleviate my circumstances and let me out. Yes, Mum, you could help me get out of prison. Because believe me, soon enough you'll have to do what I tell you to do. And don't come here on your next visit and tell lies. Oh, my love, Stefan. That's him. Killed two little girls. One in Scotland, one in Manchester. Both the bodies found on Moorland. I told me probation officer, but he didn't want to know. It needs investigating. It's him. I know it's him. Have you joined in with any of the activities yet? So how are you going to investigate it? How? What are you doing to get me out of here? Nothing. You're doing nothing to get me out. You're just leaving me. You're not doing anything. Why don't you do something to get me out of here? of everything. There's a lot that doesn't seem right. I can't see any obvious way at the moment, but I'd like to try and help. Yesterday, the undertakers called for one prisoner. He had passed away with no suspicious circumstances. I can stand a lot of things. But this shocked me. Stefan Kisko was as disabled as you say he was. He could never have got up here. What else have you got? Stefan's doctor wasn't the only witness not called. Three others all identified the same car in the lay-by at the time of the murder. And it wasn't Stefan's car. That's it? We've got a private detective. He keeps coming up against the same problem. 
It happened a very long time ago. If I'm going to stand up for him in an appeal court, you're going to have to find me something to fight with. I've spoken with the specialist about the testosterone injections that Stefan was receiving at the time of the murder. He absolutely refutes there can be any link between the injections and a change in Stefan's behaviour. It was the link that everybody wanted to believe in, and it was totally false. Mr. Malone, he stopped writing. He told the prison authorities he doesn't want to see me again. It's very important. Whoever controls the weather controls the world. Yes, they would do. It's a very good idea. And these voices you hear, they could talk about your dad. He had x-ray machines in the kitchen ceiling. He used to copy me songs and give them to the boss at work. At the Inland Revenue? Yes. And he used to sell them on to Tom Jones and Andy Fairweather Low. They got to be famous and I got put in here. You dirty bastard. You dirty fat bugger. We know what you did. You looked up a skirt, you wanked on her knickers, you dirty fat bastard. Do you know he shat himself? You dirty bugger. And do you think your mother's in on it too? Is that why you won't see her? Is that why you won't see her? It's a confused pattern with several conflicting conclusions. His reasoning does seem odd and certainly resembles schizophrenia. And, of course, with his persistent false ideas of innocence. Confused about certain things he may be, but he's always been very clear about one thing. He didn't do it. Mr Malone, it's unlikely, given Kishko's refusal to come to terms with his crime, that we can do much for him, apart from stabilising him with drugs. But there is also the strong possibility that he is just manipulating. His mother thinks he's very ill. Yes, well, that's what mothers are for. But if there are obvious signs of mental illness... Mr Malone, as a professional, I'm sure you're aware that prison is a harsh experience. Some prisoners just don't cope. And I'm afraid Stefan Kishko is one of them. You next of kin, love. There's a fault to fill in. Very well, but you've not written her a letter to see how she's doing. She might come and visit you. <laughs> you fat bastard, Stephen, at all the pies. He said she might come and see you, but she can't come until she's better. Dear Stephen, this is just to let you know that I'm okay. And Freda is okay, too. We now have a few days of very warm 
and sunny weather and I can wear my summer dresses. It is cold today, but we must be thankful that we are not snowed in like those poor people in Scotland. <laughs> and my dear, dear son, I do love you so much and miss you and think of you every minute of every day. Called a psychiatric unit. I have to get to him. I have to get to him. Charlotte. Charlotte. He's going to have to get through this on his own. And you're going to have to trust him to get through it on his own. If you try and do it for him, you're going to end up back in here. What you've got to do now is get better. Stronger. He needs you fit and well on the outside. Mr. Malone, is there any hope? We're not going to give up. And I know you won't. You, you haven't dug it deep enough. It should be our okay, Mrs. Kishkai. No. No, I don't think so. No. There might just be a way forward. And believe it or not, it might just be thanks to Margaret Hilda Thatcher. She married that man, Home Secretary. Charlotte, what we've got to do is make him bend over backwards not to obstruct a new petition to look into Stefan's case. And that is how these things happen. My son's life depends on the same man, okay? We have to find a way of saying, Mrs. Kisco, how can he, as Home Secretary, make a disinterested decision on a trial that was dependent on his own conduct and judgment so that he has to let it go through? It's going to have to be one hell of a letter, then. Given the complication of the Home Secretary's previous involvement in the case, he will be the first to appreciate that there's a particular need for a visibly disinterested decision to be made. Let me make it clear that I do not for a moment anticipate a decision taken in less than good faith. Home Secretary. The 
There's nothing here with Kishka on it, sir. Molseed. That was the name of the little girl. This must have been. A police review, Mr. Malone calls it. He says they are good men. And say, for look at the evidence again. But this time, he will be there to make sure they look at everything. He's very optimistic. Stefan, do you know? Who I am. So are you telling me that you lied? That you made it all up? You didn't see a man expose himself. I just went along with everyone else. We were just silly kids. We didn't think it'd end up in court. Do you realize the seriousness of what you did? Of course I do now. I was only a kid then. I feel awful. Just like the others. There was no flasher that night. Kisco didn't expose himself to anyone. So, we're left with the indecent exposure in daylight. Possibly an accident. Whole oh, world had it in for him, didn't they, eh? Stefan, you've been at the Nivea again. Pushed for beds. You're going back to an ordinary prison. If you keep up with the medication, the doctors think you'll do just fine. Come on. This'll help. He's no trouble. Okay. He never has been, and he's well under. Now, these are very important. They're Stefan's letters. He doesn't go anywhere without them. He'll need to hold on to them during the journey. Okay. Gets very anxious if he can't find them. Right. Come on now, Stefan. Can you go? Shove your bag, Stefan. Good man. Man, Stefan. The samples were taken on December 22nd, 1975. 
Well, we'd have copies of everything. What exactly did you want? Copies of everything. When they arrested Stefan, they did forensic tests to match his semen against semen found on the little girl's clothes. The samples didn't match. Well, who stopped it from coming out? Who did this? Who knew? The forensic scientists, the police. Or it could have been a dreadful mistake. But there's one thing that can't be argued away. Stefan's confession. <sighs> How did Stefan make such an accurate confession to a murder he didn't do? And to exposing himself in an incident that never happened? They tricked him. They tricked him. Fishko? And the result is that it has been shown that this man cannot produce sperm. This man, therefore, cannot have been the person responsible for ejaculating over the little girl's knickers and skirt, and consequently cannot have been the murderer. For those reasons, this appeal must be allowed, and the conviction quashed as being unsafe and unsatisfactory.
if he doesn't know who I am. You must be very bitter about it, Mark. And then I want to apologise to you. What are you going to do next? What does your mother feel about your release? Happy. Very happy. Oh, Mum. Yeah. 